the Lord be with you. And in your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Saint Luke. Jesus began to say to all in the synagogue, Today, the scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. And all spoke well of him and wondered at the gracious words which proceeded out of his mouth. And they said, Is not this Joseph's son? And he said to them, Doubtless you will quote to me this proverb, Physician, heal yourself. What we have heard, you did at Capernaum, do here also in your own country. And he said, Truly I say to you, no prophet is acceptable in his own country. But in truth I tell you, there were many widows in Israel in the days of Elijah, when the heaven was shut up three years and six months, when there came a great famine over all the land, and Elijah was sent to none of them, but only to Zarephath in the land of Sidon, to a woman who was a widow. And there were many lepers in Israel in the time of the prophet Elisha, and none of them was cleansed, but only Naaman the Syrian. When they heard this, all in the synagogue were filled with wrath, and they rose up and put him out of the city, and led him to the brow of the hill on which their city was built, that they might throw him down headlong, but passing through the midst of them, he went away. The Gospel of the Lord, glory and praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My dear sisters and brothers in Christ Jesus, a little fable. There was in a muddy pond a beautiful lotus. It seems it invited the frogs in the pond to taste its honey. But the frogs made fun of the lotus. You also were born like us in this muddy pond. How can you give the honey? First of all, do you have any honey at all? After some time, somewhere else came some bees and other insects to taste the honey of the lotus, it seems. Familiarity breeds contempt. We do not know as Christians the greatness of Jesus Christ. Mahatma Gandhi said, Nothing like the Sermon on the Mount preached by Jesus Christ changed my life. How blessed are we, my dear brothers and sisters, to gather in this place of grace and pray and listen to the word of God. Are we transformed by the scriptures? The disciples of Emmaus said, Were not our hearts burning? When we listen to the scriptures, when Jesus explained the scriptures to us, the disciples of Emmaus recognized the Lord in the breaking of the bread. The woman with hemorrhage, you know, touched the hem of the garment of Jesus and was healed. We do not touch the hem of the garment of Jesus, but we receive his body and blood so many times what is happening to us. 
a pebble in the sea remains there for hundreds of years but no water seeps into it sometimes it might happen we are so close to jesus but we do not know the greatness of jesus my dear brothers and sisters jesus is coming to his native place native town nazareth and then as you know as you listen last sunday he went to the synagogue and then proclaimed the scriptures he saw the passage that is written about the son of god jesus after reading it said today the scripture is fulfilled in your hearing what was the response of the people some marveled some were astonished is this not joseph's son that was their reaction how can this one say that he is a prophet even if he is a prophet how can he say that he is going to bring good news to all the poor the inclusive language that jesus used shocked them startled them no it cannot be if there is a messiah it should be according to our vision our thinking he cannot be different jesus was amazed at their lack of faith my dear brothers and sisters the same jesus may be amazed at the lack of faith of so many of our brothers and sisters who call themselves christian do you believe the lord and that jesus is rejected from his home town and jesus told them you will tell me i know physician heal yourself because they did not believe in jesus they said come on do some miracles as you did in kapernaum for your own people and jesus said when you don't have belief you will not be chosen by god you will not be the beneficiaries of god's grace so jesus told them two incidents that took place in the northern kingdom of cold one incident in the life of prophet elijah prophet elijah commanded three and a half years of famine and the whole land was suffering at that time the prophet is sent to a woman in sarephath not to a woman in israel that to a woman who was a widow a poor woman see how god chooses even outsiders to be the beneficiaries of his grace my dear brothers and sisters and then jesus gave another example there were so many lepers at the time of prophet elisha none of them was chosen to be healed but there was a syrian naman an outsider that to a disease that was abomin- abominable leprosy he went there and healed naman when they said this they understood the message jesus is including the whole world for his concern this man who is born in nazareth who played with us who ate with us he thinks he is the son of god he is a great prophet they don't want to accept him so they want to chase him away take him to the top of the hill and then want to push him down headlong and jesus escapes that's all my dear brothers and sisters the first message for us today is accept jesus know the greatness of jesus the word of god sometimes non christians read the word of god listen to the word of god in television in other programs attend the gospel meetings and so on and then they are so much touched i will live here after giving myself interesting myself all heartedly to the lord that is the invitation that the lord gives you what all treasures we have the sacraments the counseling that we receive the explanation of the scriptures let us know it we should not be like dogs in the manger dogs in the hay stack they don't eat they don't allow the other cows to eat also we have the word of god but we don't benefit by it what is the meaning 
the same Jesus comes to us constantly. How can we go on rejecting him? The Lord who created us without our consent cannot save us without our consent, as St. Augustine says. That is the thing. My dear brothers and sisters, the second message that the Lord gives us today, I believe is, some of us do not accept greatness when it is back at home. Who is called often an expert? An expert is someone who comes with a briefcase 500 kilometers away. There is greatness in your family. The people of Nazareth did not see the greatness in their own surrounding, that is in the person of Jesus. Some of us take our family members for granted, our community members for granted. Do you look at your children and appreciate them for what they are? Are you thankful to your wife for the delicious dishes she prepares for you? Are you appreciative of the sacrifice of your husband? Do you acknowledge the contribution of your elderly parents? Jesus was let down by his own people. See greatness, goodness, sacrifice in your own family members. Do not reject them. Let you be not responsible for the rejection that Jesus experienced. So many people are lamenting. I do so many things, but I am not acknowledged in my own family. I am not acknowledged in my own family. Appreciate your family members. Sometimes we take them all for granted. One day you go to a restaurant, you appreciate the food like anything. But then, years and years of hard work, your wife puts in. What is your response to it, my dear brothers and sisters? And then, the final message, I think the Lord tells us today is, you will be rejected by your people for doing good. But do not be afraid. Do not be deterred, as it was said beautifully in the interaction. Don't be discouraged. The Lord tells us, your people will not recognize you. You are doing something good. They will not acknowledge it. They will not recognize. On the contrary, you will get all kinds of sufferings. What happened to the prophet Jeremiah? The Lord, while called him, told him, they will not listen to you, but still I am sending you. The kings will be against you. The priests will be against you. The ordinary people will be against you. You will suffer. You will suffer. What all sufferings Jeremiah had, he was abused. They used their tongue to kill him first and foremost. They spoke kill of him. He was beaten. He was thrown into prison. And then to the extent he pleaded with Ezekiah, My God, if I am in that prison, I will die. What harm did I do? I did not do any harm. He is pleading, please shift me. And then he was shifted to another prison also. It was like Jesus asking, if I have done anything, tell me what I have done wrong. But if I did not do any wrong, why do you beat me? Like that. He is also arguing with God, Lord, you have seduced me. I have been seduced. See, a prophet, 40 years of dedicated service, but then no appreciation, no recognition. Instead, suffering, prison, beating. That was the prophet. But then the Lord says, I am with you. My dear brothers and sisters, the Lord is with you when you are doing good, when you are faithful to his ministry. The Lord will be with you. What happened to Jesus in Nazareth? They wanted to push him headlong from the top of the hill. And then the gospel tells us he escaped from them. He slipped from them and went away. And finally on the cross, they want to put him to death. Yes, but they did not succeed. The Lord escaped through the resurrection. The Lord shows that he is powerful, my dear brothers and sisters. Do not be discouraged in doing good. In doing good. What should be our attitude? One of my favorite passages I always say. Afterwards you read Luke 17 chapter 10 to us. There the Lord says, 
if someone has a servant and then he returns from work, will he tell him, come on you first eat? No, he doesn't tell him like that. Will he not tell him that you first serve me and then you can do what you want? After telling this little parable, Jesus says, you also, having done all that is commanded of you, say that you are only useless servants. We have only done what is our duty. Do not grumble. Do not lament. How much I work for my children, they are not grateful to me. How much I am working for this school, this institution, nobody appreciates me. Do not grumble. Believers, my dear brothers and sisters, should not grumble at same. What do you have to say? What I did was what a good Catholic parent would do to his children. That's all. If my children are okay, let them be okay. Doesn't matter. The Lord will reward you. He will be your strength. He will be your consolation, my dear brothers and sisters. Yes, let us acknowledge as a community the greatness of Jesus. Let us acknowledge the contributions of our family members. Let us not be discouraged when we do not get any reward. The Lord is our strength. The Lord is our consolation. 